Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Stephanie Hickling Beckman. Thank you so much for joining us today. This event is part of the 2020 Asheville Protest Murals Virtual Exhibition. And the third and final event in the series is next Wednesday at noon, and it'll focus on BIPOC engagement in public arts. It's moderated by Seku Coleman. To view the ex exhibition and register for this event, please visit AshevilleArts.com slash protest. All right, so we want to thank um, Dogwood Health Trust, Asheville Area Arts Council, the Martin Luther King Jr. Association um, of Asheville and Buncombe County, and Equity Over Everything for sponsoring today's event. If you have questions for today's panelists, please put them in the Q&A, and we'll do our best to get to them at the end of today's panel. Putting those questions in the Q&A section rather than the chat will increase the likelihood of the, those questions being addressed. So let's get started with introducing our esteemed panel members. Um, I'll, we have Cleaster Cotton and Mr. Dwayne Barton, and I will let each of them tell you a little bit about themselves, and then we'll move on into the questions. Greetings, everyone. And uh, I am Cleaster Cotton. I'm an artist. I am an educator. I am an inventor of the Al Nuji Codes modern day hieroglyphics. Um, I work with youth. Um, I'm a consultant for a global television company. And I'm excited to have a public art piece down at 55 South Market Street. Thank you. All right, Dwayne. Dwayne, you're muted. There you go. I hear that all the time. <laughs> um, my name is Dwayne Barton with Hood Huggers International. Um, I'm a social entrepreneur, an artist, and an environmentalist. Uh, my focus is in neighborhoods. It's like, how do we build, how do we restore neighborhoods and then teach the young people um, to follow our lead while also leaving them an inheritance to build from? All right, as I said, my name is Stephanie Hickling Beckman. I'm the Managing Artistic Director for Different Strokes Performing Arts Collective. So with that being said, we're gonna move right into our questions. Dwayne and Cleaster, thank you so much for joining us today. So I'm gonna start by asking that either one of you can jump in. Um, we've only got two of us right now. We're expecting two more members, one more member. So let's hope that he has an opportunity to show up. His flight was delayed. So we're just gonna start with Dwayne and Cleaster. So will you, either one of you, talk about your experience with public art in Asheville? Um. My first experience with public art in Asheville was uh, um, building it in my backyard because I didn't, at that time, I don't think the city was, I just didn't see a representation of African-American artists in downtown and I didn't see it. And, and going even going in the galleries downtown, I didn't see it. So I was like, you know what? You probably need to go ahead and make something yourself based on you know your uh, media and what you was using the topics you wanted to explore with arts so um, from that doing it just doing it it really helped me you know explore other ways on how to um, use public art to uh, you know educate and, and support communities you know, for us, the goal is to do a piece of artwork that inspires somebody to get down, and get busy, you know, start a hustle to try to improve the conditions in the environment or in, in their community. All right, Cleaster, you have something you want to say about that? Yes, well, I'm, I'm seeing Dwayne's piece on the uh, screen right now, and I really appreciate that that's a very large scale piece there and um so i just want to congratulate you on that Dwayne. and um 
it, it's about um, hmm, my experience. My experience is honoring my ancestors, honoring the children, the elders. Is about being true to um, myself as a as a creative person, and when uh, the call went out for that piece, um, that piece is on a condominium down at Fifty Five South Market Street. Is actually that that wall faces Beaumont Avenue, and um, it, it was um, a challenge because uh, a lot of times there's so many ingredients involved in public art that many of us, many people who look like me don't get the opportunity or um, to actually see it all the way through to what you physically see behind me there on that image. And um, that area is uh, considered the gateway to the block. The block, the historic African-American business uh, slash social area and historic because uh, many, many things have changed that, that area. And um, when that piece came through me, it was about honoring the people whose lives took place down there who are not there currently and to place them back there uh, um, forever uh, as long as that building and those steel that steel installation it is a steel installation by the way um, it's a 14 foot wide wall and that um, that's a cubist figures made out of core 10 steel. One of the things in honoring um, my people is that that core 10 steel changes and patinas over the years from you know this orange color that it started out to be and it rusts or patinas over the years and it will it will go and turn to a black color. So it goes through the melanated skin tones. And the reason why I mentioned these aspects is because my experience was that I had to consider many things in that installation, including the fact that there are still pegs behind the cubist figures that so that the people are not the figures, they don't have their back up against the wall, literally or figuratively. And so those pegs lift them away from the Carolina blue wall representing the sky in North Carolina. And it also adds to the element of casting the shadow. So their shadows are casted during different times of the day. And, and um, there are so many things to consider when you do a public art piece. And one of them is, am I true to myself as an artist? Am I honoring my ancestors and elders and ancients and exos? And am I doing what needs to be done to inspire the children that um, who, who are in many cases unseen. The children who look like me um, are um, not seen often enough in art where I live here. So um, that, that aspect in dealing with the uh, community aspect, the environmental nature, what the client wants, there's so many things that you have to consider and then partnering with people. I don't work in steel. I designed that in steel. I partnered with um, Steam Studio and Justin Turcotte. So, so there's a lot of ingredients that have to come into actually bringing it from conception to putting it out there. All right, thank you, thank both of you so much. I, as I listen to you speak and and look at your work, I'm I'm a little bit saddened because I've seen both of those pieces, and I had no idea that they were from both of you. I've known both of you for a while, but I I've seen nothing on those sites that 
make that would make me know that that you were the artists responsible for those. So congratulations for those. They're very prominent and very important, both of them, which um, I know we we're gonna save Q&A for the end, but I've got one right now, which I think we should answer because it, it's related to what I just said. I had no idea that the piece along the river was Duane's. Is it acknowledged anywhere on site? Um, no, it's not. And um, we still were working with the city to do that. I know the city is planning on doing this whole thing around um, auto, doing like auto where you go to a spot and you press this button and it tells you a little bit about the artwork. And Clear, I don't know if you familiar, you know, I'm sure you know about that too. So I suppose to be building that thing, but um, yeah, and like Clear has to do, it says it, it takes a lot of stuff behind the scene to make a real hustle happen. You know what I mean? It's a lot of other stuff that needs to happen in order for the art to actually be created. So the goal is to put a sign down in and and and, and to you know put a label on it and QR code and all those things so we can really educate people about. You know, that that, that particular work is uh, excerpts are out of poem. I think it's called um, In Unity We Trust and stuff like that. So it was, that quote is really saying, you know, how we all need to be trying to um, work together to improve, you know, our, our community, our nation, our world. You know? so. Great, yeah. that's beautiful. Ste yeah. Sorry. Stephanie, yes, what what... Yes, I was actually interviewed by the um, constructor of a tech, uh, an app that, and um, when you go down to my poem that's down by the river, you could bring your phone up and turn it towards that or touch the app. And when you touch the app, you will learn about that piece and um, I also, I also recorded uh, a piece of, about the piece, so that when you go there and you bring that app up, you not only read about what that piece is, but you hear from the artist what that piece really means. And I want to say, right now, it's very important that we tell our own stories and that we control the narrative. Our stories have been told by others for so long and reinterpreted that I feel is really important for us to honor the artists who are alive and well now to yep. hear from them what their yep. story is. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. So, so with all of this in mind and acknowledging that there is a lot of art in Asheville and acknowledging that people like the two of you have done this amazing work, what do, this two-part question, what do you like about Asheville's public art scene and what would you change about it? Um, what I like about it. Well, I can say for that particular thing on the river and the piece I had that was put in front of the chamber, it was another artist who educated me about that opportunity. I wouldn't have never known about it. Me being an artist in this area for a little while, it was just a word of mouth about the opportunity. I like that, but I think a more grassroots infrastructure around public art that 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 would African American young and other African -American do it so they are aware of opportunities and, and uh, so and that's that that's so I don't know I kind of got that mixed up so one the word of mouth of artists that let you know when an opportunity exists and that, yo, you might be a good fit. I like that, because none of those two pieces would be there without that. The thing I don't like is the actual, we haven't been able to build 
a coherent, sustained infrastructure that supports more African-American artists to get in position to do more public art, if not in their community throughout the city. Now, I mean, I know there's a lot of stuff going on around African-American history and all this stuff going on right now, but who is creating it? Who is telling the story like Ms. Ms. Cotton said? I, I think if, if we're gonna be turning up the faucet for this, that means we should also turn up the faucet of creating that pipeline of support for artists to get in position to tell their story in the way they wanna tell it, especially if they, you know, native to this area. Yes, amen. Class, how about you? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Barton, <laughs> for laying it down. <laughs> yes. Uh, I feel that there's, uh, what comes to me first is an education piece. Um, doing public art is daunting. It's not for the faint of heart. There's going to be more ingredients that are going to come up than you could have ever imagined. Um, building relationships prior to that is essential because you, you need to be able to, to um, confirm that whatever you do is structurally sound, is environmentally um, friendly, uh, and I feel reflects the neighborhood is, is, a, is a voice. I always, I always use the container of the children when I do anything, basically, because uh, right now, during this time in my life, I'm doing legacy building. Um, I've put many decades into um, educating the children, and now it's time for me to do legacy building, which that piece down there called Going to Market, um, I feel that is a piece that needs to be there. I feel that it being considered the gateway to the, you know, to the historic block African American business district. And it wasn't just a business district because during that time, our people were not um, welcome in many places and venues and a place that like the YMI being on that corner with that drugstore there, a drugstore for us was a place that we could go and be accepted and be honored and talk and meet and eat and buy sundries and all of those things like that. So, so I feel that the education piece is important in order to bring out some of the magnificent artists who uh, artists of color who are in Asheville um, to let them know that with the, with the proper education about public art, you can do it so that when it comes a time that there's a call for artists, we, we go, go for it. That's really important, you know, and building those relationships that say, oh, if you don't do, if you don't fabricate in this way, I got, I got your back, I can help you do that, and let's work together in, in, in making this happen, because it wasn't just about me going there, drawing the design, and chiseling out that piece, it was about computer technology, this, you know, the steam studio, and my, my colleagues down there having a water jet cutter and being able to program my design into the computers and it, it it takes a lot and then you have to interface with the public and do the charrettes where you have to talk to people and give them your you know you have to talk to people and let them know that you have this has heart and meaning for you so the children could walk up and see, you know, these brown figures that look like them. Mm -hmm. And everybody could see that Black people do live in Asheville. <laughs> this, this, this next question um, is a big question because we've talked about it in other panels before and it imagine is going to generate a lot of comment and a lot of question on it. So I'm going to ask you now, what challenges have you faced being a BIPOC artist in Asheville. Ch 
challenges of um getting the bag, getting the money, do what you want to do, getting the bag. That's a that can be a challenge, especially first starting out. But because, like I said, when I went through the city, I didn't see that it was representing me. So I just said, well, let, let, let me create what I know don't exist. So if you approaching it like that, it's like, you know, your biggest obstacle is, is your own mind, <laughs> your own faith in creating what you want to see happen in, in your community. So um, I think that's been the big, biggest challenge because if, you know, uh, because a lot of times if, if you have a vision or uh, ideas and pe people don't see it, you you walking alone and, and, and you get more people <laughs> saying it can't happen, it won't happen, then you have support. So I think to me, um, that could be the biggest challenge. And uh, I think the challenge, another challenge I see today is like, like I say, our city has been in slow motion around supporting African-American artists. So now it seems like we fast forwarding, we fast forwarding this in a way that's still leaving behind the artists. It's like, slow down. You <laughs> remember you, you wasn't engaged with this community in the process in a real quality way. How do we allow the community to catch up to the new momentum that's here now around African-American history, art, and all of those things? I see it. I'm on the tours. I see all the stuff that's going around the city. And I mean, I only been since like 2001. There is a difference. There is a difference compared to around 2001 and 2000 to now. So how do we ensure that, you know, community still not being left behind with all the, uh, all the momentum and, and attention those communities are now getting? Dwayne, you so deep, it's hard to keep up with you. And it's like, I have all these questions that bounce around in my mind every time you speak, because it's, it's, it's so much there. But I, I want to I wanna hold on to that question that you asked, and we're going to come back to that. But how do we catch up with the momentum and not leave people behind as, as we continue to, to create more art, more public art in Asheville? Um, Cleesta, what do you have to say about that? Well, I look at the microcosm and the macrocosm, and I see they're all intertwined. And doing being a public artist in Asheville is the same as being an exhibited artist in Asheville or anywhere else um, internationally. And um, it is about a part of it. One aspect of it is knowing okay i feel that i my art is crucial to creating the full picture of american history 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 um i feel like my people are from the motherland al kabulan kemet and from america and to 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 um, ignore my artistic statement is to create a puzzle with missing pieces and those those missing pieces they are us and um i i recall i remember a time when i was in um in paris france and I was visiting the museums, the Louvre, Musée d'Orsay, and other places. And it was quite emotional for me as a Black woman. I was standing in front of a tapestry, huge tra tapestry, complete wall, the whole wall. I mean, it was unbelievably, it was big. It's called a mural here, but it was a, it was a tapestry. And back then, the artists were were paid to and lived a life 
uh, based on visually telling this the story of what was going on in society. And I was looking at this piece and I was just looking at it from north to south and, and it was a feast, big table, all this food. And as my eye went down to the table and the ingredient and, and all the dishes on the table, and then I looked down and around the table legs were, were dogs. And then I looked down and there were my people, right? So at this moment that I am experiencing this devastation, um, a, a white woman walks up to me and says, oh my goodness, isn't this fantastic? Isn't it fabulous? And it is. it was fantastic, it was fabulous, the art was all of that. But my experience was how I was being received, how I was receiving that piece and my perspective. So it what it, it it hurt me. It hurt my feelings, and that mm. superseded my um, experience of just looking at the art. So I, I I say all that to say that there when our art is valued, the whole game will change. When the importance that our art really is, and I would like to not be like Basquiat and sell a, a painting for $110 million posthumously. I would like to see it. I would like for my children to see it. I would like for the children who I help make it through these days to see it. So you, when you're looking at the viewer and who's deciding on the value of art and what the importance of art, that is the biggest challenge because then you don't have to uh, convince people that they have a treasure chest or a jewel. You know, you don't have to convince yes. people. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, I, I, as I walk around downtown and I look in galleries and, and even some of the other art installations, all of those that I see are like very public. They're very, they're very, touristy. So they're set up in places where tourists are going to see them as they walk around. I don't know, just because I did, just like I didn't know that those two pieces belong to the two of you. I don't know how much of that is, is made by BIPOC artists. Do you have any idea what is main, main street downtown that, that we see that's by BIPOC artists? Either I do not know, and I don't see that as being. Um, I don't. I don't know. If 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 we can say that there is very little to none, um, why do you think that is? The same reason what I just spoke about valuing and seeing the importance and the value, the significance, the narrative changing and all of that. What I just spoke about is the same thread that leads, is the same thread that leads to that. Okay. How about you, Dwayne? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, yeah. I was is similar to what Ms. Cotton said. It's like the, the value, do we value it? You know, if you, you know, if you look at the policy in our city and county, it's on ink that they value the presence of uh, the African-American community here now. So the, uh, our community should reflect that in all ways, in business, in art, in education, and I think we have to build it. It don't exist. Now, I know there's a few things downtown, you know, the uh, Triangle Park, the, 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 the boxes that's down by the fire department. I think that was some African-American artists, but I think we need to catch up. That's why I was saying, like, our policy and, 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 and our air, is saying that we value that and we want this to happen. Now the bag and the blood need to catch up to that. Mm. Mm. I like that. All right, let's let's take a break for just a second. Um, 
Kai just joined us. Um, Kai, can you hear us? Hi, you want to introduce yourself to the folks out of here? I know you just you just landed and I know you're a little frazzled and I'm jumping right in at you. <laughs> no, I'm but you want to be in yeah. Late. No problem, um, no problem at all. Yep, so um, uh, my name is Kai Lenzion. Um, uh, I am kind of a local videographer and photographer, but I've been doing it for um, quite some time now. Uh, and yeah, I'm honored to be on this panel. Um, very, 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 very quick. Uh, basically, the image you're looking at is my gallery um, that was presented at the YMI. Um, it included a lot of things about kind of racial equity and justice, but um, it also included a couple of the protests that were actually in downtown Asheville. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be here. All right, thank you, Kai. So I'm gonna jump right in with you with the question that we were Absolutely. just discussing before you came on, but interested in knowing what challenges you've faced as an artist of color in Asheville. Well, I mean, as we've kind of talked about before a little bit, it's really about just kind of, um, I guess, vision and, and being able to present your work. You know, a lot of people don't have the same opportunity as far as being seen uh, when you walk down the street in Asheville unfortunately most of the galleries most of all of the um, venues that are with, with art are all white artists and um, you know coming up and have trying to get into that has proven to be very difficult um, you know either because people are Think you're local they're just kind of like i don't know about you but um it, it has been very difficult you know and it's a lot about connections and the people you know as well but um you know i've i've had people for example so i had my gallery up in um the presbyterian church before the ymi and um you know i went to the 50th anniversary of Sel march on selma and one of my photos, it's actually in that um, slide you have, it's the one in the background, it says, we can't breathe. And there's a big crowd around it. Um, this, you know, white gentleman came up to me and started rambling about how George Floyd was so important. And that that is the message and whatnot, but didn't realize that this was about Eric Gardner. This was years and years before that. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of ignorance um, in part of coming up as a black artist in Asheville um, and having to kind of wave around that. Um, but uh, I think overall it's been kind of difficult, but there's a lot more to do for sure. I know that's yeah. a long way of answering that question. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Thank you so much. Um, let's look at, um, I'm just gonna go to the Q&A for a second before we continue. Um, Julie Lehman says that these installments really help make Asheville feel like a community, that she loves seeing them. And so she says, thank you both. And um, another viewer wants to know, will either of you, as more people of color, be creating more powerful, amazing art installations in Asheville and surrounding areas? I hope the answer is yes. Um, I mean, I... I can't speak to kind of installations and whatnot, but I will definitely I'll always be taking photos and always be creating videos and trying to bring up other black artists in the community. Awesome. So let, let's keep moving and then we'll get back to some Q&A questions. But what is public art important for our community and for you? Why is public art important for our community and for you? I mean, it's so, uh, it, it, that's just kind of a, it, art is very subjective. You know, art is, it, it speaks to certain people in different ways, but it's so important to, uh, uh, when you think Asheville, you know, well, there's a lot of things that come through your mind, but um, art is one of those things. And uh, I guess having representation in that area for everyone is very important. Um, but I, I think that art is, and other people can talk about this as well, but it's just so important 
uh, for our culture, for our city. Um, absolutely. Okay. Anybody else? All right. There we go. Um, I think it's important because uh, art uh, educates, it, it inspires people and um, in um, see self in art, um, I, I think is 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 just good for the mind, body, spirit to, to that, that that speaks to you and, and uh, validates your, your your presence and your experience and your resilience. We talked about I this. Feel that, just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want no, to say no, something continue. to that question. Continue. So I feel like it's, it's so important. It's important for many reasons. One of the reasons is the children. Um, when the children uh, get to see art, interact with art and see them or people who look like them that have made that art, then you are growing their roots in that location. We want the youth here who have positive contributions to make in this place to stay here and make them and not just be ready to leave because they haven't seen the full picture of this place where people, tourism is extremely high and people you know, in the airport. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is that it's important to the children, it's important for mental health. I feel art is like a global glue. You could stand in front of a, a, a piece of art with a person who you may never have an interaction with in life because of views or whatever it is. And you two can stand there and talk about that piece. And that is a place where the communication happens. I feel that um, when an artist knows who they are, uh, and I'm talking about from the roots up, um, when you, when you, when I, for me to know that my ancestors built the pyramids, that's big. For me to know that my ancestors jotted out the solar system in the, in the walls of the Dogon Cliffs, that's powerful. So as you learn yourself and who you are, and then you take responsibility to reflect your, your lineage, your culture, your people, and be positive for the children through art, it's so profound and so important. Thank you. I'm glad you said that, Claire, because that's what I was getting to, that we had talked briefly about this yesterday and that you mentioned that you were, let me get the words right, legacy building. And so by, by bringing up the children, I think you, you expanded on that, that it's important for our youth in particular to see public art because they get to know what is possible and it expands their thinking, but also for um, BIPOC youth in particular to be able to see folks doing the thing that they want to do or that they don't necessarily know is possible is huge. It's huge. It's uh, um, it's definitely speaks to our ancestry. So thank you for that. Um, let's see, let's go back to the Q and A and then I'll have one last question for all of you. So Tyshawn Johnson says, good evening and asks if we have a resource center available for local artists and resources. Um, this might be an arts council question included as well, but do any of you know the answer to that question? I know we need to create a pipeline of support and turn the existing infrastructure, churches, community centers to that very thing, backyards. We, we need to create it. And once they are created and maintained and, and connected, then we need to monetize them. I like that. Sacred yeah. Coleman keeps bringing up the, the pipeline 
the pipeline um, as a resource. So um, I think that's very important that we start to supply that pipeline so that our youth can start doing more work. Cleaster, you were gonna say? Yes, um, with Youth Artist Empowered, which is an organization that I founded um, a few years ago, one of the things that we're doing now uh, is uh, we are visiting local artists and setting up schedules with local artists and makers that we can come as a group and spend a hands-on immersive experience with them. So what this does is it opens the door to show them, for instance, the work that Mr. Barton is doing um, and um, to hear his story, to link with him and to know this is a threshold that you're welcome to cross. And um, also artists who are in the River Arts District who are partnering so that these children can see, oh, this is how it's done. This is how I could make a living doing art. And now this is a threshold. That's really important to be able to step over a threshold and feel welcome, because that's a, a, a big reason why a lot of the, the, the youth who look like us are not going into that realm, because they need that. They need that wall opened, the door opened, the wall torn down, however you want to put it. So I'm. it actually is a conscious effort in creating exactly what you're talking about. Thank you so much. Um, um, Mr. Johnson also says, I would love to work with you in my capacity as the CED community facilitator to discover how to leverage myself and PISCA to assist in any way. And then he gives, um, gives a contact email. So we'll make sure that uh, the Arts Council gets that out to the folks on this call so that you'll have that resource. Um, another viewer says, are either of your public installations included in any publications or are they included online on any websites or other places of prominency where they can be viewed, respected, and appreciated? Uh, nope. Um, we we got to create that. Amen. Amen. It's all about creation, right? All right. And um, is there a program in the local schools where your art and other BIPOC artists are being discussed and implemented in curriculums? Well, I know I'm working with several different schools. And the goal is to make that connection. And we did create our own curriculum for the Peace Gardens that talks about the art and the particular issues that we're trying to address. So that's uh, that's in development. And we do have a good, we have some good momentum around that, at least interest in, in, in doing more with young people. And we even, like Ms. Cotton, we, we also have a, HHI under instructions, like you from the neighborhood, like we trying to prepare them to pass this down to them, to engage them around the arts and the environment and social enterprise. But you using the arts as the engagement tool and the healing tool. And Great, I think we lost you. Yeah, while we wait for Dwayne's audio to come back, Kai, did you want to come in? Um, I, I guess mostly, and this is kind of tagging on to um, just kind of children seeing, you know, different thing. I, as me growing up in Asheville, part of what got me into photography and into videography is literally having Black mentors and seeing that that is possible, you know. so. I really, really, really want to push how important that is and how important it is for um, youth to see that it is possible um, 
to create something and to see your to see professionals, not only people just doing what they love, but also being able to make money with what they're doing. Because that's a huge other part to it is, um, you know, you can look good doing it, but are, are, you, are you actually making a solid income? Um, but yeah, that's, that's just all I want to say on, on that one. All right. Well, Very important. I wanted to Please say do. the tapas. I'm sorry, the, the it's teaching artists presenting in Asheville area schools, which um, I became involved in in 2010, is where artists get a chance to be teaching artists. So you use your art form to teach the academics by way of the arts, and um, that's a way of bringing. Um, art into schools. And when I do go in, you know, I let them know that I'm an artist. I'm, I'm, I'm an exhibited visual artist. And a part of the educational piece is to show them who I am and what I am doing. So they get a different perspective of me. And then I talk to them about you know, age appropriate, but business and how you can be an artist and that's, you can make a, a living as an artist. And um, so that program is really, really good. And um, in bringing the arts in into the schools, I feel perhaps maybe more art by us can be in the schools, whether it's a temporary or permanent exhibit. Um, I know that a lot of artists of color have taken it upon themselves, um, my company, Different Strokes included, to bring in more BIPOC youth to, it, to mentor them and expose them to what it's like to do the thing they like doing or to introduce something to them that they might like to do. Um, Tapas sounds like a great program for that as well. How do other artists of color get involved with Tapas? Do you know, Cleaster? Yes, yes. They could reach out to the Asheville Area, Asheville Area Arts Council, to the Asheville City Schools Foundation, Buncombe County Schools. It used to be just Asheville City Schools, and now it's expanded. So it was T A P A S, but now it's T A P. AAS, which stands for Teaching Artists Presenting in Asheville Area Schools. And within that, as a teaching artist, um, it, it's important to get the training that you need. And or you could be a fabulous artist or you could be a fabulous teacher. Um, this is a specialty um, uh, occupation and you have to be able to merge the two in this harmonious way. And so I say that if you are ascribing to be a teaching artist, make sure you get the professional development that you need so that when you go into the schools, you'll feel comfortable and safe with uh, uh, safe in presenting who you are and what you are connecting to the curriculum and, and everybody will be the, that much better from it when you have the proper training. Awesome. Um, uh, the Arts Council just dropped into the chat window a link that I think will address that as well about how to get involved with that. So um, for those who are listening and watching, please check that out. Um, Dwayne, were you reaching for your mute button or were you just moving? Okay, your, your audio keeps coming in and out. So just stop me when you're ready to start talking again. I'm gonna keep going with the Q&A. Um, someone says, thank you all so much for this discussion. Would you be open to collaborating on art and creative projects in Old Fort with the Eagle Market Street Developments Corporation and the programming happening with youth education food, farming, outdoor recreation, economic development, and workforce development with communities of color in McDowell County. So um, we'll make sure we get that information to y'all as you consider if, if that's something that you would like to be involved in. And uh, 
Yes. Pardon me, Stephanie. I like to say that um, you just mentioned a piece that's really important in dealing with art and the environment. Um, and I manage a community garden and a part of that is educating children and, ref and youth in the arts but bringing in the uh, organic growing piece. So there's a big thing to learn through the garden and to learn how to create art, arts projects, which the Asheville Area Arts Council supported in an Arts Bill community grant with painting the birdhouses in the garden. Okay, thanks, Cleaster. Um, Julie Lehman would like to know if any of you will be involved in the new Vance Monument. I know that um, Sekou is going to really directly deal with this answer um, in, in, in the final part of this series, but we're really interested in hearing what y'all have to say about that, if um, you're involved I, in it. So I'm kind of making the well, it's still kind of up in the air right now a little bit, but um, I'm helping develop the uh, video series for um, kind of public what people are wanting to do with it, you know, actually like the people of Asheville, what they would like to see um, be there. And it's very much so a collaborative effort. It's not just like a push in narrative or anything like that. It really is wanting to know um, what people think and what they want to do with that. But I, I, I am hopefully be going to be a part of that. Awesome, that's great. Um, Cleas or Dwayne, either of you involved in that or seeking to be involved with it or not so much? Um, I'm still, Thinking about it, I, I know the process. I know the process is going down, and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things going down right now around the city. So it's hard to keep up with everything. But I'm thinking about it. I'm still uh, undecided on what will be the best road because you know I can't sit here and say that we need to build a pipeline and sustainability. And so now when I look at projects, I say, okay, how is this project going to empower people? How is it going to be sustainable? And how is it going to benefit the very community that it says it, it, it wants to re represent? You know, so uh, I'm not I'm not clear if all those check marks have been checked on this project. I am so I'll not be really involved. curious. To see to finish. Sorry, I, I'm currently not involved. I don't know uh, a lot about it, so I am not. Okay, thank you. Um, Julie Mayfield says, "Is the Asheville Art Museum bringing kids of color into its spaces and encouraging them to experience art? And what role does or should it play in this arena?" I mean, I'm sure we don't have exact answers to that because we don't know what the art museum has planned, but what are your thoughts just in hearing that question? I can't Anybody? talk to, uh, um, uh, to like the children of uh, the, <laughs> the little black children. I can't speak <laughs> it to them, but um, I can say that as far as, um, being open to other artists they personally reached out like when i had my gallery up um i had representatives from them that Asheville museum to actually come in reach out to me and move forward i mean like i said still in the works but um they're interested in you know having my art there so they are very interested in diversifying in um in being you know, you know, one with the real community of Asheville. So I, I can speak to that, but I don't know about the little black kids. I can't. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know that right, uh, they're, <laughs> they're part of uh, the museum is partnering with the Youth Artist Empowered, one of the projects that we have been doing. Um, and uh, so there will be an exhibit up uh, coming up soon. 
And um, so we are definitely partnering with them. And I want to say that I'm really glad because I feel like the museum has um, a very powerful say in what is happening in the art scene. And so through that educational piece, it's important. Um, you know, I know that some of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Barton, as well as uh, others have been exhibited there. Um, I have not been yet, but the pro programming with the children, we, we are facilitating that type of partnership. And I am truly grateful for that. All right. Um, I am going to jump to the last question because I think we would really all like to know. So can you all share with the viewers what you're currently working on and where they can go to learn more about your work? Um, for me, I'm currently um, trying to ma maintain this peace garden and continue to build out um, different sculptures with young people. I think I'm having an art show. I'm preparing for an art show. I'm doing March the 24th, 23rd, down on the river. Um, uh, about this whole thing about creating these pipelines and, and community coming together. We're also going to start creating these um, communication kiosks that we want to add a little flair on it because, you know, part of building a pipeline is making sure people getting the information. So how do you have kiosks, how do you have meetings, how do you have all these different things to try to build the infrastructure to maintain people's engagement over a long period of time, especially with a lot of initiatives coming out. We got reparations going down. We got, we have a lot going on in our city, but we is an infrastructure of connection. And I think art can, can help um, in that process. Amen. Um, um, if, if our viewers want to check out Hood Huggers, um, we dropped that in the chat. Um, that's Dwayne's other um, venture, hoodhuggers.com, and you can find out more about that as well. Kai, how about you? What are you working on? Sorry, I have to like, sporadically watch when I'm getting on because of the announcements overhead. But part of the reason why I'm actually in the airport is um, I'm actually DPing a documentary on um, Black um, culture within country music, actually. Um, it's a really kind of big, interesting thing I'm taking on. But um, mo mostly as well, um, I, more with like my photos and my photography, I'm really hoping to um, kind of sell more prints of that and have it up um, in local galleries. Um, the ones that didn't sell at the YMI are still available. Um, so, you know, I'm still looking for that. Um, I'm also working on, I have a kind of personal project, um, short film that I'm currently trying to fund um, uh, about pr police profiling and racial profiling. Um, and I'm working on kind of developing just the fundraiser for that. But um, a lot of good things going on. I'm really excited to be kind of pushing forward with um, that. And then the Vance project as well, hopefully for the next um, little bit. Okay. Yeah. Kai, do you have information on your fundraising efforts where folks might be able to donate to help you with that? So I'm really, I've been kind of going just looking for donors specifically, like really individual type donors or an executive producer type thing. Um, I, on my website, it's just my name, kylindzion.com. Um, it, it has a little bit more of my reel and my work there, but um, I'm hoping to reach out to individuals regarding that kind of donation process. Eventually, you know, I might do a GoFundMe. Um, I'm looking for more of like a, executive producer type, um, but yeah. Okay, thank you. So if y'all know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that might be able to um, help Kai out with that, please feel free to check out his website and you can see his name um, on his profile. That's kylindzion.com, you said Kai? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so, so go ahead and check that out. Um, 
Marlo Weingart said, I found you all so illuminating on so many levels. I wish there were I wish there were as many people who watched the Super Bowl on this call, but I'm glad you all are here to helping raise awareness. Um, and Julie Mayfield says, thank you all. We're so glad to hear that the museum is engaged with BIPOC artists and kids as well. And I want to thank you all for being so engaged with this phone call, I mean, with this Zoom call. It's been really appreciated and really illuminating in a lot of ways. And it makes me proud to see my folks represent so well. So I'm going to give a final plug for next week's talk. Don't forget to join us for a discussion on BIPOC engagement in public arts. And you can learn more and register for that at ashevillearts.com slash protest. That's ashevillearts.com slash protest. So um, we have a couple of other thank yous um, for this presentation. Um, I think folks really enjoyed hearing what you all had to say. So we are right at 12.57. I am a yeah. fanatic for time. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but we didn't get to hear about Cleesta. Can can Cleesta tell us about her, her current work? Oh, Cleesta, I'm sorry. I thought you had answered that. My bad. Okay. It's fine. Uh, I am working with youth and youth artist empowered. You could uh, send me a message or anything to, through cleestacotton.com, my website. Um, I'm, I'm consulting with the TV and media company and hopefully be able to bring them here to Asheville so that we can highlight and showcase more people who look like us. So that's a real powerful and empowering thing that I'm doing as well. Um, I just was uh, published in the... Um, Rose in the Oblivion uh, project with the um, Saint Disruption album. And uh, they're going to be doing a lot of work with spoken word artists, but my visual arts are, uh, pieces are in there. And um, also with um, Bullets and Band-Aids, veterans, a veterans um, art and literary art book that just came out. And um, yeah, I, I thank you for having me here. Clea says all that information included on your website about what you're working on, the youth projects and-, and It's not, it's currently not included. So people who are interested could reach out to me and, um, and inquire. Okay, all right. So do you have um, information how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, through cleastacotton.com. They okay. could reach out to me that way. Awesome. Awesome. That's a lot of good stuff that you're working on. Again, I think we've 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 shared all the QA except for Jeanette Brossart would like to thank us all and especially Cleesta for shining her bright light. And we all have to agree with that. So with that said, I think we are at 1259 and I wanna thank everybody one more time for coming to join us this afternoon. And please make sure to check out um, the next discussion on BIPOC engagement in public arts. And that's led by Seku Coleman. And next week we can register at ashevillearts.com slash protest. All right. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you all for being here. Thanks.